So after days of riots last week, South Africa is beginning to get back to some form of normal. But what exactly is normal for us here in South Africa? In case you missed it, let me get you up to speed of the last two weeks in South Africa. Stores and warehouses across the country have been looted and more than a thousand people have been arrested. But for five straight days, their peace has been shattered in the deadliest violence this country has seen in the more than 27 years since apartheid ended. The unrest erupted last week after former President Jacob Zuma began serving a prison sentence for contempt of court. More than 215 people killed, over 200 shopping centers and 161 malls were looted or burned. 40,000 businesses were affected in KwaZulu-Natal alone. 90 pharmacies were destroyed beyond revival, okay? Good thing we don't have this massive global pandemic and we're in the midst of a third wave that's absolutely wreaking havoc. Like, these are the kind of things that we've been dealing with in South Africa. The estimated damage is beyond 12 billion, okay? So that's roughly 824 million US dollars. So that's 12 with nine zeros. That's 12 billion rand. It's become quite clear from your comments in the last video, which you guys can watch up here, by the way, that the media overseas is not covering the situation. So please take a second to share this video with a friend or share it on Facebook so that the world can see what's happening to our country. You know, our supply chains have been broken down. We've got massive stock shortages. Jobs are gone, not like, they're gone, okay? We're hemorrhaging money out the country. We have skilled workers fleeing to other countries. No foreign investment. Our currency is crashing at the moment. You know, after 27 years under the current administration, okay, our unemployment rate is at, wait for it, 32.4%, okay? That is unbelievable. Nine years under the Zuma administration, which was our previous president, and if you missed it, this is the reason we're currently in the riots, okay? Keep in mind, Zuma and his compadres, okay, looted our state-owned companies. They literally rode our railway, okay, figuratively, rode our railways into the ground, all the way to our electricity provider. Now we have to deal with rolling blackouts. While preparing for this video, actually, my power switched off for two and a half hours. I luckily squeezed in an afternoon run and a shower, spent some time with my kids, and it's now around about 9 p.m. when I'm filming this video. So, that is quite frightening that that's kind of partly normal here because we've been having blackouts for years now. They call it load shedding, but it's rolling blackouts, okay? Imagine for a second the effect on your business if the electricity was cut twice a day for around about two and a half hours at a time. It's quite crazy that we've come to sort of expect these kind of things here as the new norm. With all the looting and the infrastructure being broken down, it, um, it seems that people think that enriching yourself temporarily is a way out of poverty, okay? It's not. It's a one-way ticket to Shed Street. We don't need a crystal ball to tell us that. History books are quite clear on that, you know, um, taking pop, uh, property without compensation, breaking down infrastructure, crashing economy, <coughs> Zimbabwe. We have the proof. Now with all of the above mentioned issues we're facing, riots, COVID, our crime rates through the roof, our police minister still wants to disarm legal gun owners. But at this point in the video, I feel it's important to thank today's sponsor for the video, which is NDT, Modular Driven Technologies. The rifle you see behind me is housed in an LSS Gen 2. It's my run and gun ultra lightweight hunting setup, and I'm actually heading hunting with it next month. So make sure you're subscribed to check out that video. If you wanna check out the LSS, links to that and MDT's website are down below. Now, during all of this chaos, our Minister of Defense, okay, was unwilling to issue a state of emergency. Now I'm gonna have a little graphic up here to compare the Minister of Defense in South Africa against your Minister of Defense that you guys have in the US. Now the reason I've chosen the US is because about 40% of all of our views on this channel actually come from our subscribers in America. So as you can see, our police or, or our Minister of Defense is not exactly, what's the word I'm looking for, qualified, okay? <laughs> Um, so yeah, those are kind of stuff we're dealing with. In fact, our president actually said, and you know, it's been an impossible job, this whole situation, we know that. But our president actually said that he thinks this was an insurrection, okay? A deliberate, coordinated, well-planned attack. Now, the reason I also think that is because there's reports, or not reports, it's confirmed that more than one and a half million rounds of ammunition was stolen out of a container, okay? Not like a random container at a gun store, 
in like the shipping department or the shipping department <laughs> like in the docks basically a container that was high off the ground so people knew where to go for this ammo so those are the kind of things that scare me okay and it scares me because they want to disarm our us you know legal gun owners now the sources with knowledge of the incident says that the bullets were housed in a container stacked high off the ground as i mentioned earlier okay Lending itself to kind of claims that, you know, it may have been intentionally targeted. Sure does seem that way. Okay, now a police minister wants to outlaw gun license on the basis of self-defense. Now for the guys watching from America, in South Africa, we've got multiple different types of gun licenses. The number one, I guess, one people have for self-defense is a section 13 license. Basically, you can carry a Glock, whatever. We cannot open carry, we have to conceal carry. And that's sort of our go-to self-defense. Now they want to reduce the number of firearms in circulation, okay, wait for it, you're not going to believe this, to curb violent crime, okay. Now claiming that the majority of the violent crime in South Africa is committed, this is almost laughable, is committed with stolen firearms from legal gun owners. Now I've run the numbers, okay, and here's what we have, okay. In the same week, by the way, that he announced that the bill to amend the Firearms Control Act he also announced that he will be reducing the police funding by 3 billion rand, okay, and adding to our VIP protection budget, and guess what they protect VIPs with? Yep, you guessed it, it's guns, okay? Leaving us, you know, normal citizens, basically, as sitting ducks, okay? Now, the latest stats from 2019 show that, and all of these things, you can go Google, I didn't put up all my homework in the description down below, but all of these things I found online on reputable news sites, okay? So from 2009, the stats show that there's basically one police officer for every 290 people in South Africa. Okay, now during the 2019 to 2020 year, this is stats from our police force, 8,007 firearms were stolen from legal gun owners. Now in that same period, in a year, 700, uh, excuse me, 673 firearms were stolen from the police, okay. There are approximately 2.6 to 3 million legal firearm owners in South Africa, according to the firearms, Central Firearms Registry, okay, which is basically around about 5% of our population. So running the numbers, if there are 3 million, let's say 3 million legal gun owners in South Africa, and there were 8,007 firearms stolen from them, that's a loss rate of about 0.26%, okay? However, with 193,000 police officers, and 673 stolen firearms, that's a loss rate of 0.35% from the police. So there's round about a 35% higher probability that a police officer's firearm will be stolen than a legal civilian's firearm. So how does that make sense? The numbers, quite frankly, just don't add up, which begs the question, why? Okay, why the misinformation? Why fudge the numbers like that? Why lie to the public? The truth be told, I don't have the answers, but it looks and feels like they're trying to disarm legal gun owners, okay? Just look at the state of chaos at CFR where our applications are processed for new firearm ownerships. Now, looking at that, it's no wonder why it takes years for some people to legally own a firearm in South Africa. Now, in South Africa, around about 36 people out of every 100,000 people are murdered daily. Okay, those are the stats from our police. The murder rate in South Africa is so high that it's been compared to literal war zones. Okay, conflicts such as in Iraq, Syria, Yemen, Somalia, and even Afghanistan, in those kind of conflict zones, the murder rate per 100,000 people is from 38 to 200. So ours at 36, it's pretty rough. Okay, so my advice, even for new firearm owners, is to get a section 16 license. Now, earlier I mentioned that there are, there are multiple different types of licenses. A section 16 license is basically a license for sport shooting. All you have to do is do the exam, which is ridiculously easy. Okay, your section 16 license is then valid for 10 years versus the five years that your self-defense license would be. The other benefit with getting a section 16 license is, and what I would encourage you to do, is to actually go out and participate in matches and become proficient with the gear that you have. You know, I heard an analogy once that just by having your firearm with you every day, it doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be able to use it proficiently when you need to. Just like if I was driving around with a violin in the trunk of my car, okay? It doesn't mean that I'll all of a sudden be able to perform at an orchestra 
at a last minute notice. Okay, so owning a firearm in South Africa is actually very easy despite what people say. The real problem here is it takes long, okay, as we've seen the CFR is, first of all, I think re relatively overwhelmed with applications. There's no real systems in place. Everything is still paper-based. I don't know why, but it is. Um, so basically, the, the real issue is time. It just takes time. So if you don't start, you're never going to get one. So just get your foot in the door. Do your competency. I've got a complete video on the process. And I'm going to link it down below as to how you can legally own a firearm to protect yourself and your family and your business for that matter, or your neighbors in South Africa, okay. Now, I don't think that the proposal um, for the amendments of the Firearms Control Act will actually pass. But even if they somehow do get it right, the Firearms Act in South Africa also states that you can legally defend your life or the life of someone else, okay, with a legal firearm. So even if you have a Section 16, a sports shooting license, your Glock 19 is going to do just fine in that scenario. So despite all the negative stuff, you know, ever since I watched Stuart Little as a kid, didn't think you'll hear about Stuart Little in this video, did you? I've always looked for a silver lining, otherwise we'll end up being pretty miserable people, you know. So it's been amazing to see the communities working together to clean up, rebuild, you know, seeing people sending care packages across the country to help out their fellow humans that they've never met. They know, don't know who they are, but they're reaching out and helping them. My heart goes out to everyone affected by this. Uh, if you lost somebody in the chaos, if you lost your business, uh, your community, your house burnt down, um, it's been nuts. Um, I wanna leave you guys with a saying, okay? In Afrikaans saying, that's something we actually do on this channel, like an Afrikaans word of the day. I'm gonna give you guys a phrase. And the phrase goes something like this, and I'll loosely translate it for you in English too. But the saying in Afrikaans is, a folk red himself, okay? And that loosely translates to, a nation or a people rescues itself, okay? We've done it before and I think as South Africans, if we band together and we make smart decisions, we can rebuild our country. So guys, stay safe out there, be vigilant. As I said, 1.5 million rounds of ammo stolen and lots of gun shops looted. So stay safe, stay vigilant, and most importantly, stay armed. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed if you're new here and uh, follow me on Instagram. I'd really appreciate that too. Bye.